Hello and welcome once again to Exit Strategy. This is the podcast. <laughs> Get this. This is the podcast where we ask comedians, what would you do with your life if comedy was no longer a part of it? You're not making people laugh anymore. What are you going to do with all that free time? Oof. It's a tough choice, but it's the question I got to ask because I've been uh, willed to this podcast by a wealthy uh, philanthropist. He said that you have to run. Uh, anyway, I don't have enough time to get into that backstory. Uh, happy Oscar season is upon us. It is the winter. Uh, <laughs> it's Oscar season. I think the uh, ceremony is in just a few days. And I thought, what better time to have on this guest, Mr. Joey Devine, we have a little bit of a uh, Los Angeles comedy tradition at Joey Devine's house. He is kind of a madman. He, several years ago, started this tradition where on the weekend of the Oscars, the, the day before the Oscars, he screens every single nominee back-to-back in a full-on eight-to-nine movie marathon <laughs> that goes well into the night. He invites over... All the comedians he knows, all of our friends come over, and we just watch every single nominee. Uh, it is truly one of my favorite events of the year that no one knows about. Uh, there is, it's, it's dozens, literally dozens of the smartest, funniest, most sharp comedic minds all gathered in a room watching Oscar nominees, which, hey, let's face it, sometimes, like this year, they're not that good, and I cannot think of anything I want to do more in life than to sit around with the funniest people I know and watch A Star is Born and Bohemian Rhapsody back-to-back, which will happen. Uh, so it's, it's, i, I got to have him on. i got to ask him his, the method to his madness. Maybe you want to have a similar Oscar marathon. We're going to come up with a perfect 2019 Oscar nominee lineup for you. And it's official. You can follow along with us as we watch it here in Los Angeles on Pacific Time. You're going to have to do the math on that one. But at noon on Saturday, we're going to start our Oscar marathon, and we're going to give you the full lineup uh, of how we're doing it. Uh, also, Joey hosts a podcast with his friend Sean Keen. It's called Round Ball Rock. He's a basketball enthusiast, this Joey guy. I don't know anything about basketball. Like, nothing. I know I like like it when I watch it, but I don't know any of the personalities. I don't know anything about the game at all. I'm a little bit intimidated by a sport that I don't know about. But Joey makes a compelling case for digging into the drama of basketball. And uh, oddly enough, it's through the lens of his podcast, Round Ball Rock. I'm intrigued. So check that out. If you're a basketball fan and you're looking for a little bit of... Uh, if you're looking a little bit of the behind-the-scenes drama of the whole sport... This might be the one for you. I know I'm intrigued, uh, but he's going to talk about that, too. Uh, anyway, speaking of Joey Devine talking, let's get to it. He's not here at this moment. Let's get to a moment where he was here. Let's get to the show. What do you say? <laughs> All right, here is Joey Devine on Exit Strategy right after this. Okay. Unless, I'll talk about whatever you want to talk about, Joe. Well, I want to talk about this with you because this is a annual tradition uh-huh. at the Divine <laughs> Household. You got yourself. We got an Oscars marathon coming up. I look forward to it every single year. Mm-hmm. You got to tell the people about this. What you do pre-Oscars. We watch every movie. Every movie. Uh, in a 24-hour marathon. Yeah. Kind of a madman situation. I don't think you should ever do it, but you do it. Uh, yeah, uh, we've been doing it. The first year was the year Inception was nominated. Yeah, the King Speech won. So what year was that? Oh, I don't know. Twenty thirteen, maybe. Twenty thirteen. See, now that like was that. that was back when there was like five nominees. No, no, tops. it was the first year they had ten. Oh, okay. So you you've never had to make. I've that never jump. had the okay. five. Yeah, I was always concerned with you having to like make that big adjustment. <laughs> Uh, no, because we we did it in a theater. That's how this started. Yeah. Uh, AMC Theater had a thing which 
for 50 bucks, you got to sit in their theater for 24 hours and watch them all. So basically now you've replicated that at your house for the past couple years. Because they don't do it in L.A. Which is kind of shocking, especially in Los Angeles, that, that that's not an availability. But I think, honestly, it has to do with the fact that it is so much time to have people in your theater. I think that gets I a little gross. I think in L.A. it has more to do with the fact that they're like, everybody has these screeners. <laughs> Watch them in your house. <laughs> yeah, like, everyone has seen these at their house already. Um, That's how I've seen a lot of uh, Best Picture nominees now, is at your house. Uh, the way the director intended it with mm-hmm. dozens so of comedians screaming, comedians screaming jokes throughout the process. This year is going to be much better because... I'm timing it so Bohemian Rhapsody goes when the most comedians are oh, there yeah. because there you go. This is the first one where it feels like I don't care if people scream like riff yeah. over this because it sucks. This year does not. This have is a lot going on. This year fucking sucks. Yeah. Sorry, I keep cursing. Is it's that okay. okay. It's, Am it's, I allowed to do no, that? No, I recently added the M or the oh, mature good. or whatever yeah. the explicit. So <laughs> we have free reign over here. As long as it's not hate speech, Joey, we uh, can do it. I mean, I'm only going to hate on <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> um, Before we get into the movies, because I do yeah. want to, I want to break them down. Sure, sure. Um, I I, li- I love this tradition. You have all of these comedians come, and it's like it's kind of thrilling because you know that you are in a room with some of the mm-hmm. best minds in yeah. uh, the world, <laughs> and you're watching movies and you're not taking it seriously, even though these are like passion projects for hundreds of people, and we just tear them apart. You can judge how good the movie is, though. Yes, because like. Like, Bridge of Spies just got destroyed <laughs> that one year. But then last yeah. year, I we watched Phantom Thread, and people, like, watched it. They were like... They shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember Hacksaw Ridge did not fare very no, well either. But, I mean, that one was also funny to it's make so fun sad. of. It's so sad The Mule is not nominated <laughs> this year. That would have been perfect. But I, uh, it's funny because uh, I, I think people go in and out, but how many people actually stay the whole time? Not that many. Not that many. It's yeah. usually like Sean Keane, Caitlin Gill, me. Last year, Danielle Perez, I think, stayed the whole time. She hung in there. Yeah. Um, and that's about it. Yeah. I mean, there are a couple people sleeping at that point, See, that too. doesn't count. In yeah. my mind, if you're sleeping, I'm sorry. I mean, there was one year... You don't get the medal at the end. The saddest year was... Oh, man. I forgot about this until right now. <laughs> Was all of my friends had moved down here to LA, but yeah. I have not. I had not yet, and I did it anyway. I and, <laughs> by yourself, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just remember that's the saddest. pressing play. Pressing play on American Sniper <laughs> at five thirty in the morning. <laughs> Just asking while my yourself. while my wonderful beautiful girlfriend slept on the couch next to me and thinking what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> that had to have had a, just a little bit of a boost pushing you to Los Angeles. At least oh, for a sure. little bit. American Sniper. You can thank Clint Eastwood for your eventual <laughs> trip down well, here to live. And rest in peace the American Sniper himself, Chris uh, Kyle. Got to thank him, right? Man. <laughs> so this year you are tasked now with the inevitable. Every it, year you got to time it out because mm-hmm. you got eight movies to put up. And, and there are certain ones you always want to avoid. This one seems easier because it's like there are two I think where people just you want people to talk over them. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was going to say there's way more than two. I this mean, year. yeah. But like Look, the one I don't know where to put right now is Roma. Uh huh. Because normally I would put the like thoughtful, quiet foreign film first and I'd like do stuff. Yeah. Uh, Because I have to like set up and like cook food for the. And not everybody's there yet. Yeah. So you can kind of have it on. But I think it's going to win Best Picture, and it would be weird if I was like making food while the Best (laughs) Picture was on and not really watching it. it. Um, because you haven't seen any of these? I've seen... This year, I've seen more than I normally okay, would. Okay, most Usually times you go I in pretty cold. Them. I okay. walked out of Bohemian Rhapsody. I hear it's bad. It's really bad. I, that's the, Honestly, <laughs> that's the one that I'm most looking for. I think that and A Star is Born mm-hmm. are the ones that I would most want to see uh, with a group of Those are going back to back. Yeah. Merciless. Uh, yeah. Destroying Green it. Book is also... 
I think people well, that's could get a little dicey. There's some racial undertones there, but also it's like hacky, right? Yeah. I mean, well, I haven't I think seen they're it. All pretty hacky. Uh, yeah, I hate it. I saw Vice. Uh huh. Did not like Vice. I saw Vice on uh, Christmas, either I think Christmas Eve mm-hmm. or Christmas Day. I can't remember one which one, but uh, man. Nothing will uh, destroy your holiday spirit <laughs> like, uh, hey, we really are on a bad path, and we've been on it for 20 years. Uh, but you have to s- sort of pace the night. Right. This one, s- we got a gimme, though, because I feel like everyone has seen Black Panther already. Yeah. So I can just put that last, and it won't really count, you know? I have no memories of that movie at all. That's really boring. It's been a, it's, it's like, it's, well, it's been a year. Yeah. And it's fine. It's a Marvel movie. It's like a good Marvel movie. But that's it's, what I kind of figure. Like it's a when, Marvel movie. With every Marvel movie, I don't remember really any of the details, but I know when I'm watching it, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, exactly. A Marvel movie is basically a Big Mac. Like, <laughs> you're never going to get... You know what you're getting with a yeah. Big Mac. Like, the worst Big Mac is a... You know, a C plus, and the best Big Mac is a B. You know what I it mean? Just, There's it, like no. It will always be a constant. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So you got what's the best way to start off one of these marathons? You got to start it off with something kind of throwaway. Yeah, because no one's there yet. No one. We're comedians. Okay. No one shows up on time. All right, throwaway. I, you know, I, I'm. I think it might be Vice. I think so. I yeah. think Vice might have to get out of the way because you're not going to. Re- it's too complex and complicated. And, but it's also like not fun. Vice feels like it should be a fun movie. Yeah. And then you watch it and you're like, this isn't fun. Vice feels like it was going to be Wolf of Wall Street, mm-hmm. but then it was not Wolf no, of Wall Street. No, it's not even W. Like yeah. I liked W better. Well, it just felt like the whole time uh, I, I'm i watching a performance of Dick Cheney, but I have no, I have no hook it takes, to why I want to even yeah, be watching him. It takes no stance on who it thinks Dick Cheney is either. Yeah. It's just like a straight up telling of events, which is weird. Yeah. Well, he lo- he's it's like uh, he he's it's very well researched. He's yes. done some. Very, it's insanely well researched. It's like an educational and movie, and he in a looks way. like. Christian Bale looks like Dick Cheney, <laughs> but I just don't. But other than that, but so yeah, I, I think Vice is going. First. You know what? Let's let's, let's go. Let's do let's this do right this now. Tonight. Actually, all right, all right, all right. This is this is going to be a forty-five hour podcast as we <laughs> paint this. Okay, so Vice is out now. What mm-hmm. do you want to do after your first movie? Do you want to start getting into the goods? No, Not yet? I think you slowly ramp in. Okay. So I think we're going Black Klansman next. Black Klansman, man, you're getting all the like. I saw Black Klansman. I liked Black Klansman. Um, okay. But I did too, but it's also going to be very uncomfortable because when you're around comedians, like we do like to have very little respect for mm-hmm. things, but there's like, I don't know, it's going to be dicey. See, the thing about Black Klansman, though, is I think it's l- there's light enough moments where it's not, you're not That's hammering true. people too That's early. True. The there heavy is stuff, there's like, in it. yeah, there's like three heavy scenes. Okay. And we can work through those. Okay, so now people are coming. Now you've got like a pretty yeah. healthy. So now we're going. We're hitting them straight up. Star is born. Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh yes, and that's the that's the way you want them to go. Yeah. Okay, and did you have a, a thinking behind that? Uh, I want, want the mo- most mo- people yeah. there for Bohemian Rhapsody. Okay. And about what time are we at here? Because it starts at noon. That means right. at Bohemian so, Rhapsody, we're at like at, like an eight p.m. Yeah. Now. Okay. You know what? Actually, flip those then. Oh, actually, okay. yeah. So it's gonna go Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, A Star Is Born. I think that's probably best because people, if they, especially if they stay for Vice and Black Klansman, mm-hmm. they're gonna probably have a lot of of, of uh, comment energy mm-hmm. pent up, and yeah. they're gonna want to really dig in. And A Star Is Born, people are gonna come in with some comments pre thought out, right? Because it's kind of a cultural sure. phenomenon. Okay. Um, so right. now where do we go from here? So now we're at, all right, so two, four, six, eight. We're at 10 o'clock. This is where you put the movie that people most want to see again. All right, that must the, be. Something good goes here. This is where the favorite That's goes. the favorite. That's yeah. what I was going to say. That was yeah. by far, out of all of these, the only one that I would probably ever want to see again, non-ironically. And I'm going to have to say, great choice. Um, then we're So now we're at midnight. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be a little bit tiring do you give them something easy like a Black Panther? No, Black Panther again. No one's gonna want to watch Black Panther again. I don't okay. think. That's just <laughs> that's your throwaway. That's your that's this year's The Martian, if okay, you will. Okay. We show, we're showing that last. So your choices now are Green Book and Roma. So this is a funny thing. Do we go after the favorite, uh, the heavy one uh-huh. with lots of reading, 
Or oh, I forgot about the subtitle yeah. situation. Yeah, that could get. Or do we go like the kind of jokey, not as good one? I think we're gonna go Roma Green Book. Yeah, I think you're right too because Roma, you know, you might have a little break in there, but then you can get them back in the late night mm-hmm. with Green Book because I think it's probably easier. Plus, to watch. I think I'm hitting a second wind after the favorite because uh, look, I am. Chances are I'm the only one staying up for all of these. Yes. Because people also straggle in and out. <laughs> Does um, anybody ever come in at like five in the morning? Sometimes. That's yeah, I crazy. think Caitlin at one point <laughs> went and dropped Kelly off at home, and her she's girlfriend, like, and then she back came back. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I think that we've got it. We've got it. Yeah. I think this, and then if you want to follow along here, this is what you do you go get screeners, you go steal these movies, mm-hmm. however you want to do it. But at noon on Saturday before the Oscars, here's what we're going with we got a Vice, mm-hmm. we got Black Klansmen. Bohemian Rhapsody, mm-hmm. A Star is Born, The Favorite, Roma, Green Book, Black Panther. Should be pretty good. And just know that while you're watching it, there are some very high, very drunk, rambunctious comedians uh, just skewering them as, yep. uh, as we go. That's and- a solid 16 to 20 hours, depending <laughs> on how many breaks we take. <laughs> Because Bohemian Rhapsody is like a three hour, yeah, isn't it? I think so yeah. I think Vice is also pretty oh, long, man, actually. Long ones. Okay, we might have to rethink this. this no, might, I think the, I think this, this is still the drag. right order. Okay, okay. I'm glad that we did this. I got mm-hmm. I, I I ran an errand for you, basically. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> and then do you actually watch the ceremony? Because that seems like anticlimactic after all. Yes, Joey. When do you sleep? Um, I get a, I get. I get a, I get some sleep in the middle of the day in between the ceremony and there was one year I watched a Golden State Warriors basketball game oh that God. started at noon on Sunday for some reason. Why? Why? Because you like it, and that was what I was, was going to segue into it because yeah. you know not only are you a fan of the movies, you also got you, you got two sides to you. I do and only two. Uh, yeah, it's true. <laughs> only the two. <laughs> You're also a big basketball fan. Tell me about uh, your podcast, Round Ball Rock. Uh, it's a pat. It's it's a podcast. It's a podcast. Um, it's the weirdest basketball podcast, I would say. It's hosted by me and my friend and funny comedian Sean Keen. Um, where we talk about the minutia of basketball, but yeah. not the games. Mm-hmm. Um, and also we do really weird, stupid stuff. Like, now, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I want to hear what the stupid things are. Uh, like we review movies as, Br- uh, Brooke and Robin Lopez, the Lopez twins. <laughs> who, who are the Lopez? <laughs> um, they are two seven foot tall centers who play in the NBA who <laughs> went to, they're twins. Yeah. Uh, they went to Stanford. Uh, one of them who has a- an actual house uh, at Disney World. Uh, they're they're uh, they're <laughs> obsessed with Disneyland. Um, he lives at Disney World. Yeah, he has a house yeah, on the grounds yeah. at Disney World. That's so uh, wow. One of them was on a podcast earlier this year, and he told a story about. Uh, someone asked him, in fact, what he would do if he wasn't a basketball player. Not yeah. unlike the premise of this podcast yes, and i will and, have him on at some point and he said uh i want to be a uh, i would want to be a disney imagineer yeah and then he started telling a story about how he, the last time he and his brother were at disney world they ran into the lead disney imagineer while they were both dressed as tron <laughs> What a confluence! They're of seven great foot minds. tall twins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Take that good in mind. <laughs> God, they're just fanatics, and they'd be like, "It's probably some old dude that no one would recognize." But they're yeah. Just imagine if you're like an elderly man with an engineering <laughs> background and two seven foot tall people dressed yeah. as Tron approach you. One excitedly. of them has hair that looks like sideshow Bob's. In <laughs> fact, they when he fr- the first interview he ever gave on TV because he looked like sideshow Bob, Robin. They asked him what he was going to do that now he was named the player of the game. And he said, I'm going to kill Bart Simpson and <laughs> walked away. That is really funny. <laughs> See, I don't um, follow basketball. I don't know really anything about it. But I always get the perception as an outsider that if you're going to follow a sport, mm-hmm. this oh, seems to be the 100% one hundred percent. If you're sports talking about follow. like everybody seems like the fashion is great. Mm-hmm. People seem to have like a really good sense of humor. Yes. And it's an exciting game. Yeah. But also... I kind of think you can be a basketball fan without ever watching a game at this point. <laughs> it's true. With the way the internet works. Because yeah. there's constantly like a story going on. You can almost follow it like a soap opera at this yeah. point. Like, currently the Lakers are um, 
kind of imploding because LeBron James came and there's no one good around him. So he's like kind of in a Game of Thrones way trying to destroy two teams at the same time right now. Like he's back room trying to get the coach of the Lakers fired. Yeah. And he owns a... Sp- this is going to be weird. This is going to be weird and hard to explain. <laughs> but LeBron James owns a uh, an agency. A sports agency? Like yes. That seems like a conflict of it interest. It sure does, doesn't it? I um, don't think that that should yeah, be a thing. Yeah, his best friend from high school is the actual CEO. Yeah, but he's clearly funding it. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's funded by LeBron James being their client. LeBron <laughs> James being one of the most famous people in the world. Yeah. Um, and their other client is one of the best players in the league, Anthony Davis, who plays in New Orleans. Yeah. And they just did this weird, like, they tried to hold up the New Orleans... Like, they tried to run a heist on the New Orleans Pelicans, basically, by telling them that Anthony Davis doesn't want to re-sign there, so they should trade him to the Lakers right now. See, this... And he would only re-sign with the Lakers. <laughs> I don't... I, I, as some as an outsider, it seems like this, this is nefarious, and I can... It I, is! I'm looking at it, and I'm just like, that shouldn't be. These yeah, players uh-huh. are doing... They're, like, controlling the league for their own personal mm-hmm. game. But... But that's in awesome. In one sense, that's <laughs> awesome, right? Because, like... The players should control the league, yeah. actually. Like, who wants to root for billionaires? But also... I want to root for 100 millionaires. <laughs> 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 I mean, if I have to choose. But yeah, that's just currently the plot line. Other yeah. crazy plot lines we've had this year. Um, a guy on the Minnesota Timberwolves uh, demanded a trade, and people on the internet figured out it's because he... Uh, maybe slept with another teammate's girlfriend. Wow. Uh, and also then wouldn't show up to, like, games <laughs> until they traded him. But then they were taking too long to trade him, so he went to a practice, yeah. screamed at everyone, beat the real the rest of the team in a five-on-five game where he, as his other four teammates, had just, like, like minor leaguers... <laughs> And then <laughs> told them all to fuck themselves and then walked out of the practice. And then they traded him like a week later. See, now this, <laughs> this I like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Chicago Bulls currently have this coach that's a maniac named, J- uh, named Jim Boylan. Yeah. Who uh, they rehired. He's very old. Um, there was a mutiny. The Chicago Bulls almost refused to, <laughs> to go to a practice because he was making them like do, like, high school basketball player drills, like, run suicides and do push-ups and stuff. (laughs) And so they had a mutiny and almost didn't go to a practice, but instead made the practice into a team meeting where they all screamed at the guy, and it was his third day on the job. And so they formed a leadership committee. (laughs) Who? Who is reporting? Like, how do they find this stuff out? It's just There's sports like, journalism is yeah like is a monster. Every team has like <laughs> ten re- ten dedicated reporters. <laughs> so it sounds to me like also that guy Jim Boylan also once described a guy as having an awesome soul. Oh, <laughs> see, these, I feel like I'm not getting this with football or baseball. no, not at all. Uh, do you as as your podcast uh, is it is it something where I mean because I, I clearly this all of this information mm-hmm. is out there yeah and you're aggregating mm-hmm. it could we a, do two could, a week could a non listener could a non fan uh, enjoy the podcast oh one hundred percent okay we're all jokes yeah. I mean we did an episode that was just a fake true crime podcast about I found these kids who tricked a bunch of uh, basketball Twitter um they were running this fake news. Fake Twitter website called, like, Twitter handle called The Scoop NBA. Yeah. And we're putting out fake NBA rumors. <laughs> and then all these real reporters got mad at them, and they would say hilarious things back, like, be a man, not a fan, <laughs> to the <laughs> reporters. Uh, one of them got on the, uh, like, Chicago sports radio, and it yeah. turned out he was a high school student. <laughs> um who, and yeah, who is running the show over here? I mean, it's like it's, it's lawless. It's the best. So uh, you know, maybe this is my end to round to to round ball. To, yeah, that's what you guys call it, yeah. right? You guys, <laughs> yeah, we do call it round. You guys want to yeah. watch round ball? <laughs> 
Uh, got, but we're all jokes. We don't even really talk about games. Yeah. We'll talk about trades and stuff. But, but nothing to do with a, actual, like, oh, the fundamentals. And, no, in fact, and, I kind of get mad at Sean when he tries to talk about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the analysis of what is going on and, and past distribution and percentages. Yeah, it seems like a game uh, where stats are not as important. Is that true? It doesn't seem a statistic to me. Um, like a baseball would be. Well, yes, because the difference between baseball is it's so there's an act there's no actual teamwork in baseball and except like when you're throwing one ball to a yeah. the base or whatever. Where basketball there's just too many variables yeah. really. Like how could you even record what's I going on? I mean there on? is like analytics and math and stuff where it's like a three pointer is more than a two pointer. So even if you're shooting forty percent from three, that's better than sh- being a center that shoots seventy percent. Just because three points is more than two. You see, Joey's bored talking exactly. about exactly. Yeah, like, this is the part I hate. I want to talk about what's the drama yeah. for your mama, what is going on behind the scenes, and how that might play a part in. Yeah, the I want to talk game. about the multiple twins that are in the NBA. There are several sets of twins. Is there a fertility drug scandal, perhaps? Oh, I wish. But there's uh, there's Fingers these two crossed. twins named Markeith and Marcus Morris. Yeah. Who have matching tattoos. That's crazy. They even have the same tattoos. At one point, they signed one contract. Oh, like they're the like a package? Team. Yeah. But then, but then the Phoenix Suns traded one of the guys. That is <laughs> thrilling to me. What a fuck you. That these, these two <laughs> don't even see themselves as individuals. And a industry makes them. Are they, are they doing okay after that? Yeah, I they, mean, they went to different teams. They're still on different teams. I would teams. love it like they just physically started to shrivel. At one point last year, one of them was in the playoffs and the other one was not. And the one guy, <laughs> Markeith, no, it was Marcus, sorry. Marcus turned his ankle, Yeah. but Markeith was in the building and then he came back and played really well. And there was like an NBA conspiracy theory that maybe Markeith, oh um, maybe Markeith went and put God. on his uniform and started See, playing. This is, ah, yeah, this is what I like. I like anything like where the the any theory about why Michael Jordan mm-hmm. does one or one thing or another, like the flu <laughs> game and all that stuff. If if this is what your podcast is, I'm saying let's do this. Oh, thanks, Jeff. I uh, think it's fun. It's very fun. Give yeah. it give it a check out. <laughs> what it's called? Round Ball Rock. It's called Round Ball Rock. <laughs> uh, let's get to my podcast. Let's do it, Joey. Mm-hmm. Enough talking about movies and basketball. Mm-hmm. It's time to get real in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joey, you've been doing comedy for quite a while. You've uh, got your podcast, and you've got uh, you're, you're in Los Angeles. Yeah. Damn it, you're, you're in in Hollywood town. Mm-hmm. Although sometimes I do so little, I do so little stand up at this point. Sometimes it feels like I moved here to be a delivery man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel like uh, we'll probably get into that. That's that why that is. Mm-hmm. But uh, is it first off exit strategy? Let's talk about it. If sure. you did not do comedy, if you were not even going to pursue it at all, is there any particular path you would want to go down that would that you think you would succeed in? I was actually thinking about this yesterday before you asked me to oh, do really? this, and part of me sometimes thinks about like, what if I just become like a line cook? Wow. Like, I don't even want to be, like, a head chef. No, just a basic. Just like a, like, I don't have time to think of anything. I'm not even a particularly good cook, but I follow instructions. Yeah, you can make eggs. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind if somebody yells at me. I wouldn't have time to think about anything. I could be like, yeah, chef! Yeah. You know, like, it would be fun to flip the pan, you know, <laughs> to learn how to do that. <laughs> Maybe I'd be able to cut stuff without cutting well, myself. Well, I think you would obviously, after a while, get better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for sure. And that I love food. Yeah. Um, so I'm, your skills would develop. Yeah. That seems like a fun way to be. I mean, I don't think you make very much money, but whatever. No, but it sounds to me it like... It seems fulfilling. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> yeah. Like... You're part of a team. You basically just said, I want a job where I don't have to do anything, like th- anything thoughtful, and I'm okay if people yell at me. Yeah. I, like, no, I mean, that's my skill set. I think I'd be good at that. Uh, okay. You know what okay. I mean? That's like the realistic answer. Yeah, but like, I don't know. I worked in restaurants for a long time. Yeah. 
And I don't know, there was always something nice about the kitchen. Like you like that. They atmosphere. liked each other so much. Um it was very multicultural, you yeah. know. Uh everybody sat down for like food bef- that one guy made every day before and after the shift that it was always nice yeah it's kind of a family it's atmosphere. like being part of a sports team almost yeah. without the s- the billions sports. of dollars <laughs> <laughs> what was your role uh working in a restaurant before? i was a waiter a waiter yeah i was a waiter at the bubba gum shrimp company for eight years of my life holy shit yeah. where yeah. at Four years in Monterey, four in San Francisco. <laughs> they transferred me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I transferred myself, but yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, there is two. There are two Bubba Gump uh, locations in Los Angeles. Yeah, there's one on City Walk and one in Santa Monica. So I, I mean, believe. this it, w- this could be the exit strategy. We could really we could we could apply tonight. <laughs> I'll I'll pull up the website, Joey. <laughs> but you want. Uh, as a cook and working in the kitchen, you just want to be back around that atmosphere again of like community. Yeah. And like food is fun. Like, I mean, it's hot and it's like, it's really hard work. Yeah. That's what I was saying. This sounds like a very hard exit strategy. I know, but like there's something, there's also to me something kind of glamorous about being like a man who works a job, you know? <laughs> Where, like, you go outside and you're wearing an apron and yeah. you smoke a cigarette for seven minutes before the rush comes back in, you know? Your and hands it's fast, are just your hands calloused. are noddled. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're on your feet all the time. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't want to, I'd much rather do that than sit in an office. I've had an office job. Yeah. That's soul crushing. You want to be a little active. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not tough enough to, like, do construction or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, chef is the middle ground, but you do you will not going to. But I don't. I'm not going to be a chef because that's a like cook, an artist. Sorry, yeah. A cook. You tell me what to cook. I'll I'll make it, you, chef. You're not going to have little pliers where you're putting like exactly. rose petals. Unless a guy something. tells me yeah. to do that. Yeah, sure. You could be a line cook at a five star restaurant. Sure. Yes. Except I think that takes like a. I think no, that I, takes longer than comedy to yeah, get no, up to I that think point. You would, you would have to get like. <laughs> you have to like move to France, I think, and work for three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> worth of education to do that one. <laughs> But you want you're not going to go back into the waiter field. You want to no. you want to switch it over to the cook field. No, because an old waiter's a bummer. Oh, that's true. But an old old bartender old, cool. Old waiter not cool. Even old cook. Old cook is cool. Is cool. Yeah, because it's like that guy has cooked some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh, do you have a particular kind of restaurant you would you would feel like you would? I'm I'm picturing like. Full on diner. Yeah. yeah. I want, like, yeah, I want to ring that bell. Ring that bell. Yeah. I can see you through yeah. that, like, slotted window yeah. working back like, there. I want, like, the job that Dennis uh, Haysbert left in heat to go <laughs> to go drive that real shitty one. <laughs> we can... <laughs> and then I say, uh, uh, can I talk to the cook? These yeah. eggs are a little runny. And then you come out with a full-on hat and a spatula and mm-hmm. you get in my face. I have a tattoo for some reason, <laughs> even though I have no tattoos. <laughs> well, you got to get yeah. a tattoo in this one. Uh, and then what is your life like? Because, I mean, uh, comedy's kind of got a... Uh, there's a creative fulfillment mm-hmm. that you need to get out. Would you get that out in cooking or would you feel Yeah, like... I think you get it out in making the family meal. You know what I mean? Where it's like, <laughs> oh, I get to... Now, I've spent all night cooking for everyone else. Now I get to cook for me and the staff. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant you were going to go home and cook no, for your no, family. No. I was like, that you shouldn't have to do no, that. No, no. It's like a restaurant thing where you make family meal. Yeah. At Usually, at like, before the shift and at the end of the shift. Oh, at, like, 2 in the morning. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. it's That part's really nice. It sounds very similar to, I mean... It's like a comedy show, or it's like a comedy community. There's yes. like, I mean, that's also part of the reason I think I'd like to do it is because yeah. it's also another. It's a job you actually don't have to wake up in the morning for. Like it's the same. It has kind of the of same parallels. hours. Yeah. It's like three three to eleven. <laughs> it's a it's a night gig. There's always people around that are just sort of 
you're weirdly intimate mm-hmm. with. Not like in the way that you. I feel like it, you'd be a little more intimate with them than you would be with like somebody that worked in an office with you. Yes. Well, oh, for sure. Because you're like. Because there's no space. And you're probably constantly sweating together mm-hmm. and like, oh, can you believe this shit? And like, you have to like work together on something that's like impossibly. Yeah, and stressful you get so many times. inside jokes because yeah. you're like standing like literally six inches away from someone at all times. And you probably don't have to be very polite. You don't have to have, like, Def- office No, politeness. they're, like, the worst. They're, I mean, that's, that's, like, a... That that's might, a kind of a downside, that might be honestly, a drama. is how gross they are. <laughs> <laughs> you might get pulled aside and told something absolutely uh-huh. horrible. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, I mean, here's the question for you, though. Uh, why don't you do that now? Because I like, I like writing. <laughs> well, uh, no, I mean, you, from as this l- seems like a job. What I'm saying is, this mm-hmm. seems like a job that you could have and then also pursue stuff. It doesn't I, seem like a like it. it I think I'd be I mean? too tired. This is oh, like okay. you're like working super hard, twelve hour shifts. Yeah. all day. So when you come home, it's lights yeah. out. Yeah, because even when I was a waiter, it was hard to uh, do comedy and yeah. wait tables because I was on my feet all day. Yeah, you. It, I guess. It, there's uh, that thing where you go into work and you have to be able to deal with having no energy. And yeah. I think that if you have a job like that, that that's not acceptable. Yeah, for sure. You still sure. have to cook the stuff. Yeah. Okay. So maybe don't go into it. <laughs> I was going to say pick up a couple of shifts, you know? Maybe pick up a shift or two. It was sneaky exit. Also, I'm not good at cooking. I mean, I'm fine at cooking. We'll get but, like, I can't cooking. cook things. I can't. I can't cut things where they're all the same size like they do on TV. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. When you see someone cut an onion, it's like, oh, Gordon Ramsay just cut everything <laughs> perfectly the same size. I can't do that, no you matter might be how like, hard I try. You might be like a real journeyman chef. Like you get fi- I keep saying chef. <laughs> I keep wanting you to be up and, uh, up and elevated. I've been watching too many uh, cooking competition shows. I love a cooking competition yeah, show. I just, they're the best. But I had one thing... That, that I, we were watching the final table uh-huh. on Netflix. I wasn't super into that. Not one. super into it either, and I got a lot of reasons for it. Mm-hmm. Namely, it is all white dudes. Mm-hmm. They're like two women, and uh, they don't even like they don't go to any countries other than like Europe and Mexico. But also, they don't. <laughs> My biggest problem with it was it was unclear what the prize was. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, the prize <laughs> like, is... It's like you get to sit, sit at, at the, the final the table final of this table. thing I've never <laughs> fucking heard of before. Like, who cares? And then it's also, it's on Netflix, but they still take commercial break or like, uh-huh. like they do commercial break Because I'm beats. sure they sold it to... They didn't sell it to a network. Is no, but I mean, they. I yeah. think they sold it to a network in other countries, oh, probably. Yeah, because always... it's so like... Oh, this guy's from Brazil, oh. so I'm sure they were able to like yeah. parlay that into. But the thing that uh, I had never really thought about until this show uh, visualized it for me mm-hmm. is, and this is probably something that you're gonna have to deal with when you're a cook. Is like I'm watching these people in this stressful, high pressure in- environment making these dishes, like trying to get them done on time, and they're just sweating. Mm-hmm. Bullets, and that is so gross. Uh I'm just thinking about every time I've gone out to eat, how much human sweat has been beaded off of people's foreheads. Here's the thing, though, about the sweat. First off, those shows are cheating a little bit because it's like most restaurants, um, they have like prep cooks that are cooking like half of your meal earlier in the day when it's like real chill. Oh, okay. Like a prep they're making cook, the sauces. They're and making all that the shit. sauces. Yeah. They're halfway cooking everything. Yeah. And then the, I mean, unless it's a grilled item. Yeah. Like a lot of that stuff, like a braise. You can't make a braise like immediately the second you sit down, and then half an hour later, like you're getting a short rib that's like been braised <laughs> for three hours. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Joey, uh, you're talking the talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this. <laughs> uh, he knows what he's talking about. But also, so there's not going to be as much sweat as I thought. I mean, there's a lot of sweat. See, that's gross. But man. everything is so hot. Yeah. It's okay. You're just going to be like, oh, just pretend it's salt. No, man. No, 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 no. Okay. Everything is so hot. If they sweat into anything, it's like disappearing immediately. Okay. Because everything, the pan. Like a pan a saute cook has yeah. is like four times hotter than a pan you could 
you okay. could get okay. it. Okay. It just evaporates okay. immediately. All right, I'm, t- I'm yeah. going to take your word for it. I don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, here's a question I have for you. I guess we didn't get into it as much as I thought. But I just I was kind of curious. Uh, you say that you don't do stand up as much. Yeah. Is there a particular reason why that's occurred? I was writing a pilot. Um, and also, this is gonna sound like the worst, but like when Trump got elected, I was like, yeah, I don't know. If there like there's enough space right now for like the white guy who wants to talk about emojis, <laughs> like, I was like I might give up this spot for a while. Um, yeah, and I just didn't miss it, so I took a break and then I didn't miss it. I was I'm been I'm, I got into stand up to write. Oh, uh, okay. Like so- I never had the like. Oh, I just want to do stand up. I got to do sets and sets and sets. Like I got into it like. I just want to get good enough as a stand-up to get a job as a writer. Yeah. Because I didn't know I had to go to Harvard to get one of those jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't uh, do your uh, write, writer's room internship. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll get back to stand-up. I just have felt like if I don't currently miss it, yeah, I shouldn't be doing it. How- and like I can put that energy into other stuff. Okay. It wasn't like uh, I'm fed up. It was just sort of like no uh, need a need a. I needed a break. I needed a break. Like because I wasn't writing anything new. Yeah. And so then it feels like you're beating yourself up doing the same set over and over again. And there is a certain thing, at least for me, where it's like there's so many people that want to do stand up and like need to. And if I don't. If I'm not feeling like I need to, yeah, like that's just like taking somebody's outlet. No, it's true because uh, I mean that's why the, I think that's why the exit strategy thing, whether it's a joke answer, whether it's a real answer, there's still that thing of like, is there a substitute in your life that can that can scratch that itch? Because mm-hmm. like, I, I I still have not quite found what I can do that won't make me feel antsy and anxious that I'm not expressing myself sure. without stand up and I'm kind of like in that limbo of like I don't I definitely don't do it as much as I used to yeah. and I don't have the energy to like dig back into the grind but I still need that that need to do it x amount of times a month or whatever yeah. just so that I don't go crazy I mean for me it sounds me, like you don't have that at the moment well I mean weirdly doing my dumb basketball podcast has yeah. like I mean I do that twice a week okay that's and a lot it's of content it's not like it's not like a podcast where you just talk to each other all the yeah. time either like we do like almost sketchier stuff sometimes and yeah. like a lot of I've been like doing a lot of audio manipulation stuff like that. Um, yeah, so you're kind of stretching yourself, yeah, in that way. <clears throat> um, and then again, like I have been writing stuff that probably won't go in any go anywhere, but because yeah. I don't even know the problem I'm in right now is not doing stand up. I don't know how to be a writer without being the stand-up part of it. Oh, do you know what I mean? I because think I everyone do. I know who became a writer got there through stand-up. Yeah, uh, and I don't know how to get. How do you get like a manager as just a writer or whatever? Do you mean it in the sense that uh, if you're a writer for stand-up, there's just this clear there's delivery a clear pathway mechanism. where like, yeah. oh, a manager or an agent sees you, and yeah. then the manager or the agent starts giving you jobs. But like, it's really bizarre. Yeah, when you think about it's, what it is. Oh, it is super bizarre because they're as someone whose strength has always been writing, and mm. I mean, I'm think I'm a fine performer, but I'm more of a writer. Yeah. It's always weird to me when someone sees like a gangbusters like stand up and then goes like we need to get that guy in a writer's room. Yeah. And it's like that guy doesn't want to be a writer. It doesn't make <laughs> any sense. <laughs> it's true though. It's like it's a very specialized skill to write. Mm-hmm. And it's a very specialized skill to be like a, a, like a 100% performer right. performer. And for some reason 
the system is set up that <laughs> to be a writer... Have, you have to be a really good performer. You have to learn this skill. Or you have to have done all of your homework from the day you were born, had rich parents, and gone to Harvard, and then you get to yeah. be a writer. I don't know how you do... Those are the two ways. You either are... <laughs> it's an aristocracy kind of yeah. thing, or you have to learn in an insane skill set that you will immediately abandon. Yeah. Which, that's bizarre. It's really oh, weird. <laughs> this is not a good system. We have to change it. But on, I mean, and this might just be me, rose-colored glasses, pie-in-the-sky thinking, but it feels like podcasts could be a new, like, backdoor outlet. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Because then you don't have, I mean, you lose that audience thing. Which kind of makes the performance element a little more like uh, unnecessarily stressful, mm-hmm. but then you can also express like your unfiltered ideas if you but really wanted to. What I will say about the podcast is again, I did stand up for 10, 11 years, something like that, yeah, and ran a weekly show for five years or whatever that people would come to. It was like a popular show, but like they were just coming to the show. They weren't like fans of mine. Where with yeah. a podcast, I feel like at least my podcast. <laughs> um, uh, I feel like for the first time there are like people who are fans of me. Yeah. As opposed to like I'm a fan of going to this thing that at, that's at this bar on yeah. Monday. It's very easy to blend in to your own show. Yes. Which is very sad because a lot of the best shows. I feel like there's somebody behind the scenes that is working their ass off, and yeah. no oh, one for sure. sees that. Yeah, I mean, the be- if the, the best produced shows, it seems like are the ones where you you know the people the least that are actually yeah. Doing oh, one hundred percent. So yeah, it's a thankless job. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm just, uh, we were talking about movies and basketball. Now I just want to go another hour about the frustrations we have with this, <laughs> this industry that we've chosen to be a part of for some reason. I mean, I've also at times thought, like, oh, maybe I should just become like a manager. I've had that thought too. Yeah. Because like, I know, I know so many all, people. Yeah, I know all these geniuses yeah. that no one's paying attention to. There's going to be. But I don't know how you start doing that either. I have said this before that I think that I'm better at um, advocating for other people than I am for myself. Me too. So I think that might be that the, I, I for some reason I would cold call much easier. Yes, absolutely. Like I would find the path. Honestly, for someone we else. should all probably just start being each other's manage managers. each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah all, that's all we do. All we do now for each other is we sort of. Uh, traits, sets, and spots, yeah. and and stage and also time. retweet our friends. And retweet yeah, each it's other. like, oh, this guy needs uh, people to come to his uh, <laughs> album recording. Got to retweet this. But instead of that, we should be calling up mm-hmm. clubs, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> printing out pictures, and really advocating for one another in a meaningful way. We need to start a commune. I think a comedy commune. <laughs> I think this is your new exit strategy. You're going to be the guru cult leader of a commune that actually gets us some work. Oh, man, that's... You're asking way too much leadership for me. I just said my dream is to oh, is want true. not to make no decisions. And be yelled at occasionally. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I've given you too much responsibility. I'm, I'm going to pull it back. Look, I don't want to be yelled at. I just have been yelled at enough in my life where yeah. it doesn't bother You're me. You're cool with being yelled yeah, at. Yeah, like, okay. I get mad and I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. And yeah. then, but like, you know, some people get yelled at they cr- and they, they cr- never crumple. forgive that yeah. person that yelled at them for the rest of their lives. <laughs> <laughs> and I am not one You're of not those that people. You're not that person. You're no. not going to hold a grudge. Yell at Joey all you want. Yeah, if you see him whatever, on the street, dude. If you see him on the street, just scream at yeah. him. Be fine with it. Just don't hurt my feelings, there, because that's a that's uh, a line uh, too, you okay, know. Okay, so don't dig too deep. Yeah, but you know, if but he's... surface level stuff like, oh, you burned the shrimp again, you jerk. <laughs> or I can handle that. I don't think you should be a jerk though. Okay, anyway, anyway. anyway. <laughs> uh, so I think the uh, the moral of the story is let's let's just you know keep plugging back in, keep writing, mm-hmm. get the podcast fans, get your back door into the industry. Yeah, and then maybe when you're like. 60, that's when you cook. Become, oh, you know, I was going to say become a manager. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's when you cook, and yeah. then you become the manager. <laughs> I, the worst thing you can do, though, is like, 
and knowing this firsthand because I worked at a failing restaurant that was not the Bubba Gum Shrimp Co- Shrimp Company too is like people. Unless you have restaurant skills, you cannot run and open a restaurant. Oh, you can't wing it? No. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many reality shows about failing restaurants yeah. for a reason because everyone's like, "Oh, I'd like to own a restaurant," and then they're like. They are upset by how much work it is. Oh, yeah. You have to manage an entire business. It's, yeah, it's terrible. Lot. And uh, you have to be there all the time. And also and that food to... goes bad. <laughs> There's turnover like crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a fucking nightmare. But that's why you're not running the restaurant. No, I'm just... You're just clocking yeah. in, baby. It's a check every week. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, Joey, that's going to be the exit strategy. We're going like to take it. a little break. Uh, you're going to come back. You're going to get to choose the sponsor for this week's mm-hmm. episode. Think hard, think long. It could be a lucrative decision. Could get you some. Uh, it could get you some cash. Oh, we'll see right. what happens. <laughs> We're going to be right back with more Joey Devine on Exit Strategy. going to be allowing anyone to listen to this we can give your address you can show up to the joey divine oh for sure Oscars marathon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. just go ahead and uh text him if you're at the front <laughs> gate they'll let you in uh bring a chip what what should we bring chips uh you're I good mean, you're good on food we do do a lot of we food. do a lot of it's, food we do we should not be doing as much food as we do <laughs> like <laughs> we should really Start asking, being adults and asking our friends to bring parts of food, but we don't do that. We're just like, we got to make all this food. <laughs> <laughs> I think just at this point, just ask for money. Just Venmo us 10 Yeah, bucks. yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Wow. <laughs> well, Joey, just like the Oscars, mm-hmm. our lucrative market for sponsorships mm-hmm. and commercials, so too. Unlike the Oscars, though. Is that, oh, that's true. This podcast has a host. Oh, Take that, Oscars. Yeah. That's why I get $4.2 million per ad spot. Uh, I don't have sponsors. I don't have uh, Warby Parker. I don't got promo codes. Mm-hmm. I got to go to my guests. I got to ask them, what do you think should be the sponsor? Joey, who is the sponsor for this week's episode of Exit Strategy? I think this week's sponsor, we're on brand here, Yeah, should be uh, the Mac, M-A-C, uh, Professional Hollow Edge Chef's Knife. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> available on Amazon.com. Uh, the ma- and it's the Amazon choice for best. Chef's okay, I knife. was going to ask how you because you were scrolling a little yeah. bit looking for your sponsor. I was looking for the best one. So you're going for the uh, Amazon. It's hundred and forty four ninety five dollars, but it gets you get free shipping. Uh huh. Um, and how many stars is it reviewed on uh, Amazon? What was what two hundred eighty two, four and a half stars. Two hundred eighty two. That seems a little low. I don't know if I would go with it. <sighs> I don't know. I like to see it in the. I like to see it at least five hundred stars on Amazon. But see, I, I think a chef's knife is one of those things where, yeah. Let's be honest, we don't own real knives. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that is true. We all own basically kid knives yeah. that are never <laughs> sharp enough. And it's probably wildly dangerous that we use them at all, because there's nothing more dangerous than using a dull knife yeah. on anything. But Food & Wine named this the best overall. Okay, chef, well, okay, okay. As long as Food & Wine is uh, vouching it's for it. It's the Mac MAC 80, oh, MTH 80 Professional Series 8-inch Chef's Knife with dimples. So this it's is adorable. What... <laughs> <laughs> this is the knife Joey uses at home. Yeah, this will uh, be the knife I have to buy when I uh, become a uh, when I become a line cook. <laughs> he opens bottles with it. Yeah. He uses it to shave. He does it every. He does everything with. It. If I'm going to spend hundred and forty dollars on a knife, I'm going to use that. Oh, for actually, sure. you know what? I would not use it. I would be so intimidated <laughs> by the cost of that thing that I would I would I would never feel comfortable using it. And I, like if somebody else in my house used it, I would be very like, oh, don't touch that knife. it's not supposed to. Oh, don't put it on that surface. Oh, it's not supposed to have soap on it. Like I would, it'd be stressful. That's why I don't own a cast iron skillet. It's too much work. See, a cast iron skillet overrated how much work they are. Honestly, you're saying that it's not as much work as I think it is. No. It just seems like I, if, I, if I can't it, put soap on it, it what what you is it? You season good? it once a year. You uh, all you do is you clean it out with warm water. If anything, it's easier. Okay. It just seems gross to me. No, and then if something's stuck on it, you put a little salt in there. You make a little paste. Okay. You uh, scrub it out with that. Okay. 
I've mm-hmm. got to get. I, I got to go. I got to go to uh, the Sur La Tab. <laughs> <laughs> get a whole bunch of new kitchen gear because Joey is. Uh, I'm a line cook he's now. <laughs> he's living his dream, and he's got. I'm like, the- I want to make it clear. I'm not like a foodie guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> sounds like, like yeah. I ate Jack in the Box today. Okay. <laughs> I want you to be a line cook that has like. Way too expensive equipment. Like yeah. you, you bring out the. But like, I work at a Denny's. Yeah, you bring I out the canvas out satchel <laughs> of knives, so that you can make an egg McMuffin. <laughs> this is what I want. Yeah, I want this too. I think at some point I'm going to get a fancy knife, and this one might be the one. They say that's the one, and I feel like it will literally change my life. Like I want to cook a lot more. Yeah, because it'll just go like pfft, like butter. Because cutting, cut my uh, my knives are definitely not sharp enough, and I try and sharpen them because I watched this Gordon Ramsay thing where he was like, "Just sharpen the knife before you use it every yeah. time." So I do that, but I think I might be sharpening it wrong. I yeah. might be going the wrong way or something. He's sharpening it's... the handle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need nice things. That's what that's yeah. That's what I'm gonna say. Uh, everybody out there, go get yourself a Mac. MTH80. MTH80. Uh, hollow. Oh, I forgot already. Hollow knife with dimples. Uh, yeah. Eight inch chef's knife with dimples. And that'll retail yeah. you $144.95 95. at on Amazon. On but Amazon. The shipping's free. Shipping's free. Yeah. You're probably a Prime member. Watch a little Maisel <laughs> and uh, <laughs> chop some stuff. <laughs> Can I ask you a question about Maisel real quick? Yeah. Do real, you watch, real do you watch Maisel? I've seen the first maybe four episodes. Because I. Cannot watch anything about comedy. No, I'm I'm with you. Um, there's too much uh, new. There's too much niche nuance, minutia bullshit right. that will take me out of it. Like, there's no way a doctor would go home and watch Grey's Anatomy. No, not that I'm like a doctor, but it it just <laughs> bothers me. I'm like, I can't. Yeah, I can't with yeah. this. <laughs> well, I think the worst thing about. Uh, Marvelous Miss Maisel is that people who know you're a comedian that mm-hmm. aren't comedians are like, you know what show you would like? Yeah, and Marvelous Miss Maisel, and mm-hmm. I'm like, I lived it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Lenny Bruce, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I knew him. We were hep together, uh, Joey. I think uh, obviously people got to check out Round Ball Rock. Is Please there anything do. else uh, you want to plug uh, as far as people wanting to learn more I'm about on Joey? Twitter Divine? at Joey Divine. Uh, what that's D E V I N E. Is that your real name? Be honest. It is my real name. Okay. Yeah. I'm actually my grandpa is Joseph Divine, my dad is Joseph Divine, and I'm Joseph Divine. I'm the only Joe. You're the third. No, because we all have different middle names. Oh, you have to have the same middle name to be a third. Apparently. Yeah. I think you need to abandon that and be Joey Divine the third. Except that's no one wants to be a third. <laughs> the third. Unless Esquire. if you're a professional athlete or like a wealthy person, then you can get away with the third. But a regular guy nope. can't be the third. No, nope. Joey, this is your hook. This is your in. <laughs> if you want to get back into stand up, this is your best way to get booked. If you start sending emails from Joey Divine and then three eyes after uh-huh. your name, people are gonna be like, "Whoa, oh. uh, <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna draw some attention." So, Joey Divine the third. Uh, follow him on Twitter. Oh, also, we put out a free album at uh, Round Ball Rock did. Uh, there's this really boring, really insane, in-depth basketball podcast called Dunk Don, and we do a parody of it called Slammed Up. Uh, and we put out an album of all the slammed ups at roundballrock.bandcamp.com, and you can get it for free or whatever you want to pay us. So if you're a fan of Dunk Don, I recommend it. If you're not, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Not for you. Does Dunk Don know that you dunked on them? I don't think so. All right. We'll spread the word. Let them know. The, one of the hosts of Dunk Don is famously sends angry emails to uh, basketball Twitter people, and we haven't gotten one. Oh, okay. So, so as long as your email... I do kind of want clear. one of those angry emails, though. I know. Then you've made it. If you yeah, got a feud going on. Yeah. There. It'd be great. All right. Well, uh, check it out. Check out Round Ball Rock. Uh, and uh, good luck on your Oscars marathons, everybody. It's going to be a long, hard slog, mm-hmm. but we're going to get through it. And maybe next tweet year. at me, live tweet at me your <laughs> own Oscar marathon. Live tweet at Joey. Yeah. Hashtag Oscar marathon. I'm sure that hashtag's not being used. And then uh, I guess we'll see you in the next year for the Avatar movies. Oh, I can't okay. Wait. We don't have time. We don't have time. <laughs> Joey, thanks for coming by. <laughs> thanks for coming on the show. We'll see y'all next week on Exit Strategy. Bye. <laughs>